Hello everyone, this is Nitpicky Nerd and I just watched episode 8 of season 3 of Star Trek Discovery called Sanctuary. It was a pretty terrible episode because it was just kind of meh, it was just boring, it was just filler, it was pointless, I don't care about anything that happens. So it's just boring, that's why it's probably going to be a short review. I do have a few major nitpicks of a few things that are ridiculous. Uh, first of all, they are talking about this planet which is starving, Book's planet. And yet at no point of the episode anyone even suggested just giving them replicators. We don't even see any big cities on this planet, it all seems to be just one huge forest. So how many people are on this planet? So cannot you just give them a few replicators and that's it? This is the 32nd century, you would think the replicators would be everywhere by now, but no, they are starving because of these uh, things that come out of the ocean and they cannot send them back until Michael tells them wait, cannot you use your superpowers, your uh, glowing forehead to just ask them to go back to the ocean and then they do and then that fixes the problem. Well, I guess Discovery helps a little bit, but again, Discovery is just a ship, uh, can they just, couldn't they do that before with any other ship and so no one ever thought about using their uh, superpowers to ask those creatures to come back to the ocean and instead they had to make dealings with that Orion woman who is supposed to be the villain of this season and she's such a pathetic villain and her ship gets easily defeated by Book's ship. So wait just a second. So a small ship like that can easily defeat her huge ship. So why didn't they do that before? Why can't they simply fight her? And uh, her nephew from the previous episode who I named Ramsey Bolton, now he gets eaten alive by the transworms that he previously enslaved and all of that. So just like Ramsey Bolton was eaten by his own dogs, this guy is eaten by his own transworms in a horrible way. So this pretty much confirms this is not a coincidence. It was deliberate similarity because they cannot come up with their own villains, with their own mannerisms and all of that. They have to mimic other things. And I almost wish that guy would have remained a villain because instead we are now introduced to his uh, aunt who is even more pathetic than him. So at least he had some kind of personality even if it's a ripoff of something else. But now we have this woman who has no personality at all. So she's just evil for no reason and that's it. And uh, she's so pathetic and not uh, threatening in any way. And her ship gets easily defeated by Book's ship who is piloted by one-eyed Lisa who somehow miraculously defeats him all by herself when she manually pilots the ship. That's when she becomes awesome and she overcomes her fears, I guess. And so that's it about her PTSD and all that subplot, which they were teasing us with for a few episodes in a row, like something is wrong with her or something is off about her. No, she's just okay now. She defeated the bad guys on her own and she's awesome now. And probably no repercussions about the fact that she supposedly stole that ship and they, that they fought the other ship against Starfleet's orders. No, there will be no consequences of that, of course. And Saru now uh, is looking for something to say when he jumps to warp and all of that. So this is exact same joke that we had in Lower Decks when the captain was looking for a phrase to say when they're jumping to warp. Now Saru is doing that. So Saru is uh, pondering if he should say execute or uh, punch it, or uh, hit it, or whatever. He said that's one is taken by Pike, even though Pike is dead for a thousand years, so why should you care if it's Pike's phrase or not? So he went with execute. And of course, uh, he somehow knows that make it so was Picard's uh, phrase. I guess he knows, because otherwise why not use that, or a million other uh, things to say. So it's not really funny it's more annoying i guess it was funny in lower decks it's funny once it was funny one time but now it's the same exact joke again i don't laugh at the same jokes numerous times in a row and so they cannot even come up with a new joke and they are now borrowing stuff from their own show from lower decks that we saw just before the season and so just not i'm not impressed and there are some more jokes about Linus. Linus is the comic relief now. Now he's shedding his skin and so they're locking him in his room because it's shedding everywhere. And the uh, book has an evil brother who is white because he's evil and so that's why he's white. He's his adoptive brother, I guess. And they're now calling Adira they them because uh, she said she never felt like a she. She always felt not a he, not a she. So please call me they them and all of that. And she kind of gets adopted by Stemens and his boyfriend, his husband, whatever. So she's now their adoptive daughter. Uh, she's now their adoptive children. 
all of that stuff is ridiculous, it's all filler, the stuff with Giorgio doesn't go anywhere, they could have done it in one episode, but of course they're teasing us with this, what is wrong with Giorgio, just like they were teasing us with uh, Lisa, what is wrong with her, her implant must be possessed by control or something, so they were teasing us with this mystery box for a few episodes, and then she just overcomes that by blowing up the alien uh, ship with ease, and then she's totally fine again. As for Giorgio, I guess they're going to have to send her to the past or something because uh, she's supposed to be, they'll have to set her up for her own series, which is such a terrible idea. But I'm guessing maybe they'll send her to the past on the Discovery and just make the Discovery reach the future automatically by hiding in a nebula or something because they also have to explain that short track somehow. So the whole crew was gone and uh, that computer said that she was evolving for a thousand years. So I'm guessing at some point they will just send the whole ship to the past to leave Giorgio in the past uh, to save her life and then the ship will just get to the future the normal way by just hiding in the nebula which would be so ridiculous because why couldn't they just hide in the nebula in the first place? I mean the whole reason they jumped to the future was to hide the sphere of data to make sure it doesn't fall to the hands of control. And I said even back then, why can't they just hide somewhere or just use the spore jump to just jump far away or just hide somewhere or just blow up the ship? No, we have to get the ship to the future somehow for some reason. And now they will do the opposite. So now they'll send the ship back to the past where it can be picked up by control again, risking all of creation just to get the evil empress safely back to the past because otherwise she'll die I guess. They didn't explain it yet but that will be my guess. So she's dying because her universe is too far away from their universe now or some nonsense like that. So they will have to send her to the past to give her her own spin-off show and they will send the whole ship back to the past again together with the sphere data that they <laughs> were trying so hard to get out of that time. They will send it back to that time and then just hide the ship and it will wait for them for a thousand years and then they'll just come back on board and I guess they'll have to get rid of this whole retrofit you know that A wasn't there in the short track so they'll have to repaint the ship they'll have to hide all the future technology again and then refit it again in the future so <laughs> they have to dig themselves out of the mess that they did with this whole season and the previous season and so nothing will make sense in the end and the thing that bugged me the most in this whole episode is how Book was able to see his tiny little ship from the surface of the planet and when we see shots of it from space it appears to be in very high orbit the planet is very far away it's not right in the atmosphere it's somewhere very far away from the planet and yet book is able to see it from the surface <laughs> oh my god and uh, you know the international space station i'm pretty sure it's much bigger than book's ship and yet we cannot see it with the naked eye even though it's much closer to the surface than what Book's ship apparently was. And we cannot see the station with the naked eye. We, we can see it as a small dot. We can see a small dot moving across the sky. About a year or two ago, I remember it was passing above my country and I went uh, to the beach, to an open space far away from uh, any lights to try to see it. And it just looked like, you know, like a star moving quickly in the sky. So I couldn't see any details or anything. I even tried to film it with a camera with a big uh, zooming ability and still I couldn't see anything. So we cannot recognize even a big space station even in a very low orbit of the planet. And yet Book's ship, which is tiny in comparison, was very far away from the planet. And yet he could see it from the surface. <laughs> All of this reminds me of that stupid scene in Star Wars The Force Awakens when Finn looked up at the sky and could see the Republic blowing up in the sky by that super laser somehow from a great distance and he saw it right away as it happens. So this is almost as ridiculous as that. The only explanation is that his planet is actually really tiny and all we see of it is just a forest. So if there are no big cities there must be really few people there so why not just get a few replicators from Starfleet and uh, you will solve that so called starvation of the planet. And so. This was ridiculous, as always with this show. And we had a few scenes with Mr. No Response saying we have no response, of course, and so I will add that to my long compilation of that guy saying no response in every episode. So there were some unintentional comedic moments for me, and I actually recorded my whole live reaction to it, so if anyone wants to listen to it, you can find it on this channel. But uh, I'm not talking all the way through, but there were some moments in which I kind of laughed. Maybe I'll just put... Uh, 
the timestamp of those moments in which I was laughing at something happening in the episode and all of those laughs were unintentional comedy moments because the show is so stupid. Every time they are trying to be funny, it wasn't really funny, it was just cringy. So that's my opinion about this episode, let me know what you think and we can discuss it in the comment section below and I will see you all next time. Bye bye.